Hello again, gamers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm your host, the Board Game Captain. I'm Lynn. I'm Juliana. And today we are reviewing and we're going to show you how to play Mesozoic. Now this is a game designed by Florian Fay and published by Z-Man Games. So this is a game where you are basically building Jurassic Park in a kind of abstract way. It's a um, card manipulation game where you're moving the cards around in a puzzle type fashion to try to build a dinosaur zoo, essentially. And then it is for two to six players, 20 minutes and ages eight and up. So let's start there. Now, something about the two to six players, I specifically wanted to address this. This game has no difference, really, with the exception of how many of the same cards are in there for the, for the draft. There is no real difference in the actual gameplay with the different numbers of players because you're all playing simultaneously you don't affect each other at all so and this more players does not make this game last longer at mm -mm. all like so that's actually i mean maybe i don't think the drafting it, huh maybe the drafting it takes longer but not really because you take two you yeah, pass it on you take two you pass doing it at the same time True. unless you have someone who is really slow who's, yeah <laughs> yeah the only thing is yeah if you had a chance okay that's fair if you had a chance for an, a slow person an, a, oh, there's more of a chance to have someone who has analysis paralysis with more people mm -hmm. but other than that yeah uh, it really doesn't last longer with six players than it does with two players which is pretty amazing usually most games you're like oh well this doesn't really play very well at this player count but in this one i think two to six is is right it doesn't matter the number of players mm -hmm. 20 minutes um it's probably a pretty good estimate. The actual gameplay of each round is really only a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. It's super fast. You do a quick draft, and then the actual moving of the stuff around is, what, 45 seconds? Yeah. yeah. And then it's just based on, I mean, the 20 minutes is probably in there just for your, your scoring time, yeah. essentially. Because it, it can take you a little time to score different, uh, to, to once you've, but well, I mean, even then, once you've figured out, once you've played a few times, scoring yeah. can be really quick, too. Like when yeah, Everybody could do their own and just be like, oh, I got 20 points. Now the eight and pl eight plus. What do you guys think about that for a recommendation? That's a really young recommendation on on the box. Well, kids are usually good at um, spatial awareness and yeah. puzzles. So, do you think this is a good estimate then? I think so. I think the forty five seconds is a little isn't enough time personally, but that's me. I think but it should be longer. You think it should be well, but you mean for the age recommendation or just because you you think that? Well, we're, we'll get into. Whether you you know that during the review, you yeah. can talk about that. But but uh, what about for the age record? I think it's fine. Think eight plus. What do yeah. you think, Juliana? What's your opinion? Um, I think it's fine. I think that kids would think it's really fun to move it around. I don't mm. know how good they'd be at the scoring. I guess it really depends on the kid. That's fair. That you is know, fair. Because there's a lot that goes on. They might think, oh, this looks pretty here, but then it doesn't actually score them any points. Mm. So. So let's have a look at what comes in the box. So we have a little fold out pamphlet here now. For the actual game, you have these tiny pages which have lots of diagrams on them. And the pages, page one is just the components. Pages two, three, four, and five are rules. The five is just one really big diagram to show you how the scoring works. And part of six, and you're, you, you're playing the game. And these are tiny little pages with lots of diagrams. You can learn this game in about 10 minutes and be ready to teach other people. Mm -hmm. After that, you have the advanced alternate rules uh, for scoring with the advanced cards. Then it comes with a score pad, uh, which is nice. It wasn't really necessary. I mean, you could have totally used a piece of paper, but I like that it comes with a score pad. I do get a kick out of that. Then we have the cards. Now, there are separate decks for each of the players, so that way it scales very easily regardless of the number of players. The cards have these topiaries on the back, and then they have various things on the front. And all of these cards, they're, they're linen finish. They're really high quality. Mm -hmm. I do have to give, like, big kudos to Z-Man on the quality of these cards. I love the design, too. Like, the, the drawings are phenomenal. They're super fun and quirky. Oh, yeah. Like, just like, here, let me just show that up there. Yeah, they're, they're really cool looking. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thoroughly agree. Now... I have a complaint about the final component, though. <laughs> it's the sand timer. So this game is a real-time game that requires the use of the sand timer 
for 45 seconds. We have never used the sand timer because there is nobody whose job it is to watch the sand timer since we're all making our park. So there'd be inevitably a point where somebody looks up and goes, oh, look, the time ran out. We always just set 45 seconds on a phone timer and use that. They shouldn't. Have, they should have either not even bothered with this because this is terrible and had uh, a little thing in the rule book saying use a, a, a phone timer or something to do 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. Or um, they could have had it come with a little like battery operated timer and made the box a little bigger. Mm -hmm. um, but this sand timer is just, it's garbage. So that's, that's my only complaint. Everything else production wise is really nice. What do you guys think? I would agree. Yeah. So not a whole lot to talk about here in the first portion. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bring you guys over to the table. We're going to run through how this game plays. We're going to play a full round of it and do the scoring for that round so you guys can see how it scores. This is one of those games I think it's better to just see it rather than tell you it. When we're done, we're going to come back. We're going to talk about how this game feels. We're each going to rate it and we're going to review it. Okay, so here we are setting ourselves up for a three-player game of Mesozoic. So the first thing you got to do is each person chooses their character card. So I am uh, purple here and also takes their cheat sheets. Um, and Lynn, who is over there, is playing pink and Juliana is playing yellow. Now, uh, Juliana, thank you. And now the next thing we do is we each have a specific deck that has on the face of the cards our particular color and symbol. We take those decks plus the neutral deck, shuffle them all together, and we deal 11 cards out to each player. Now we've already done the shuffle. Let's deal those 11 cards out. Now at this point, we do a draft. We each choose two cards to keep and we pass the rest of the cards clockwise around the table for the first round, counterclockwise for the second round, and clockwise again for the third round. And when we're done with our draft, we get started in the actual game. Okay, so we've finished uh, doing our draft and each of us has a deck of 11 cards and we're about to deal them out. We're gonna deal them out four wide three tall, but the bottom right uh, section is going to remain empty because we use that to move them around. Once we've dealt them all out and we're all ready, we're going to start the timer. Juliana is going to say, ready, go. And she's going to hit the phone timer on 45 seconds. Now the game comes with a sand timer, but the sand timer is terrible, so we use the phone timer. So without any further ado, we're going to run you through a round. We're going to show you how it goes. And we're going to show you how the scoring works. Is everybody ready? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, go. Okay, everybody good? Let's do this. All right, ready, go. Okay, here we go. There we go. So we got to stop it and we put our character card who adds one construction vehicle to the area in the blank spot we had when the clock stopped. Now we're going to run through the points to show you how the scoring works. So in the basic game, you get six points for every full enclosure, four points for every connected road, one point for every topiary, regardless of where it is, and two points for every construction vehicle adjacent to an attraction. So we're going to score Juliana's first over here. Now, Juliana, you've got two completed enclosures. That's amazing. So that's 12 points right there. And then for the four point road connections, you've got another two here and here. So that's another eight points. So that's 20 points right there. And then you've got, uh, let's see, this has a construction between it. So that doesn't work. 
Uh, one more point for the topiary. It doesn't look like there's any construction vehicles that are directly adjacent to the attraction. So that is 21 points for Juliana in the first round. Nice. Very nice. So Lynn, you have no completed enclosures, but you have one, two completed roads, which is very nice. That's, uh, that is eight points for the two completed roads here and here. And then you've got one, two construction vehicles adjacent to attractions. That's another four points that brings you up to 12. And then 13, 14 points total for the first round because of the topiaries there. So now for me over here, I've got two completed enclosures. That's 12 points right there. I've got one connected road. That's another four points. So that brings me up to 16. I've got one construction vehicle adjacent to an attraction here and one adjacent to an attraction there. Uh, so that was 16, 17, 89, 20. That's 20. And then I got two topiaries. That's 22 points. So I'm in the lead for the first round, but then we do a second and even a third round of this, and whoever has the most points at the end of the three rounds wins the game of Mesozoic. So we're going to take you back to the table, and we're going to talk about how this game feels, and we're going to rate it and review it. Okay, welcome back. So that was how you play a game of Mesozoic. So now we played uh, we played this game a bunch since we bought it at Gen Con. This is one that's been hitting the table a lot, just because it's so quick and very approachable mm -hmm. um now you've actually been playing this with other people not us uh we, we we've we've all at this table played this a lot but we've actually never played it together until we were just doing the demo if, if i'm not mistaken yeah that's true yeah so so we've got some various um different experiences with it now um should we start let's start negative so we can end positive let's start with negative so what do you guys think on some negatives for this game 45 seconds is not long enough for the little slider puzzle. So you think that should be longer? How long would you... you At least a minute. You, so you think just another 15 seconds would yeah. do it? What do you think of that, Juliana? Um, I think, yeah, a minute would definitely increase the playability of this. Because I definitely get really... I freeze a little bit at mm. the time. And when I'm done, I'm never happy with my yeah. zoo. Yeah, I, mine, I get to a point where I have some connections and I don't want to mess it up. And I'm pretty yeah. sure... That there's not a lot of time left, so I just sit there and like touch the cards, but don't move them. <laughs> Which you see a little bit. We were both doing that yeah. in the gameplay, so yeah. yeah, you see that. I'm gonna disagree with both of you, and I'm gonna say that I think 45 seconds is good because I like that it gives you this this real sense of urgency that you need to get the get it done. I don't like urgency, but I think that's I, I think that's one of my favorite things in the game personally. But we're allowed to disagree, so. Uh, Julianne, what do you think? What's some one of the negatives uh, or some of the negatives you can uh, say about Messenger? I'll say that when I've played it with other people, there has been a very specific winning strategy. Okay. And um, it was kind of impossible to play against the people who use that strategy because they just got points, points, points. Is it points. lots of enclosures? or? In no enclosures, it's all attractions and tractors. Oh. If you literally just do attractions, you get points and you don't have to really move it around. So that, so, so, if you have people who realize that and are focusing, and I, did, I haven't had that happen in any of my games. I usually do a variety of everything. Oh, yeah. Um, because well, I, I find it more fun I, that way. I try to avoid enclosures, and I, I think it's just easier if I have less things to focus on. So I focus on trying mm. to... To connect roads or those tramways, whatever they are, the yeah, the, the monorails. monorails. Yeah. I, just try, I focus on monorails and the attractions, tractors, and topiaries. And well, topiaries I, are free points. I, yeah. I pretty much ignore having. Okay. I usually try to do a lot of enclosures because you get you get the most points for them, yeah. and I'm usually pretty good at it. Actually, when I win, it's usually because I focus on enclosures. So maybe I mean. Even people doing enclosures can't win when when someone does that strategy. You no, so like I did three enclosures that one specific game that I'm thinking about, and they still slowed and it. They in. won. They just like killed huh. it. Yeah. I haven't. I actually I haven't played with anyone who's thought of doing that yet, and it hadn't occurred to me, so I didn't realize. Honestly, the only reason that it occurred to my friend is because she doesn't really like doing the puzzle game, or uh. she's not good at it, and so she's like, "This is easy," and then she found out that it was also points. So gotcha. that's why she did it. Fair enough. All right, so my big negative, all right, my first big negative uh, is the sand timer. The sand timer is terrible. The sand timer does not work for this game. This game should have had a timer with a sound on it. They could have just done a little a little push button, 45 second timer. You hit it, you put it down, it rings when it hits 45 seconds. That, that's all it does. Um, 
Yeah. So we, I mean, we use our phone for it, which is fine, but I just, I just hate it when companies put a game out with a sand timer when there's no one whose job it is to watch the timer and tell everybody that the sand ran out. Like, it's okay in Mysterium because the, the ghost watches the timer. Right. But in this, nobody watches the timer. So then when it runs out, you know, inevitably, if you were using the sand timer, someone's going to look up and go, oh, the sand timer's out. Mm -hmm. Oh, how long has it been out for? Right. <laughs> I hate that. I really do hate that. But it, it is an easy fix, so I'm not holding it against the game too much in my rating. It does affect it a little bit, but not too much. So now what about some of the positives? What, uh, who, Juliana, why don't you start us off on the positives? Yeah, I mean, dinosaurs are my favorite thing. So honestly... So theme? Yeah, the theme was amazing. Um, again, with the design of the cards, the game, um, it all feels very fun and um, quirky, like I mentioned. Um, and I do think it's fun to have a different puzzle every single time you play like yes. the variety is definitely um something that gives it replayability so i like the draft but i have to say the thing that's most unique about this is the fact that it's like a slide puzzle i've never played another game that's like a, exactly that's a game but it's, it's basically a slide puzzle game that's it's so weird um and i dig i dig the innovativeness that went into that mm -hmm. also I, I thoroughly agree with you the production the artwork the theme are really fun yeah what about you, Lynn? Where you, what, what are some of your positives? Uh, I like the slide puzzle. So all about the slide puzzle for you? Yeah. Okay, so now, um, so I, I guess we've, we've gone over what we all thought was good and what we all thought oh, was bad. How, I'll say one more thing that's go good. I, I do like that there is no take that in this game. Mm. Like, it's very much, we're all doing our own thing. Yes. And I like that. So who wants to go first on rating this one? Okay. You want to go? Okay. How many stars will you give... To Mesozoic. <laughs> I'm going to give it eight stars. Now that is a really high score. So, I mean, for, for a very simple light game, because you don't usually give really high scores like that to simple light games, what went into how much you love this game? Like, is it just the, the, the actual mechanics of the slide puzzle? I really, or? I really like slide puzzles. Mm. Um, and I would like it even more if, you know, I had enough time to make my dinosaur park. Perfect. But we could house rule it and we could totally add another 15 seconds to it that's not a big deal mm -hmm. but wow eight stars so you just really enjoy the game yeah just total fun fact i just like side puzzles okay that, <laughs> that's fair i'll go we'll, we'll go down the line i'll go next um so now i do like this game i really appreciate how innovative it is in coming up with a play style that that's pretty new i haven't really seen anything that plays like this but i don't enjoy it as much as you do I like it, but after playing it a number of times, I now feel I need to be in the mood to want to play this game. So I'm going to give it 6 out of 10 stars, which means exactly that. It means I like it, but I gotta be in the mood to play it. So Juliana, where are you at? Yeah, I was actually the same. I'm 6 out of 10 on this one as well. Um, my reasoning is I have played this. I played it on the harder level, which mm -hmm. I think is more fun, but... It's not a game that I'm like, I gotta play Mesozoic right now. You know, I will play it and I'll enjoy it, but I'm not gaga over this game. Right. Okay. I actually thought you were you were gonna be higher. Um I was gonna say when you when you first played it, you were kinda like, Wow, I love that game. Um it, it's come down as it because of the the like you were saying, the people you were playing with, someone was finding that super winning strategy and just always winning? Or um, I think the strategy it, it played a little bit into my mm -hmm. rating, um, but I will say it's mostly that I just kind of forgot about the game, you know, a while. It's okay. been a while, and, like, it didn't stick into my mind. Like, when it was fresh, of course, I was like, oh, you're going to love this game, but then once I played it and then forgotten about it. And then it just kind of cooled. Exactly. Well, there you have it, but, you know... Now, that's still a positive score. It mm -hmm. just means you have to be in the mood to play it. Yeah. And, again, not every game is for every person. So, uh, eight stars from Lynn, six stars from me, six stars from Juliana. Uh, that is still a positive rating from everybody here at the Board Game Captain. So, if you like slide puzzles and are a fan of dinosaurs and would love a game where that's themed around building your own dinosaur zoo, maybe you should check out Mesozoic. It's a affordable, tiny little, quick-to-play game from Z-Man Games. So if you have any comments, questions, or concerns either on Mesozoic or this video, feel free to put them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this review and tutorial video and you'd like to see us do more like it, be sure to give it a like, 
share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to us here at The Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelt with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game, game on. on.